Think of space-time as a loaf of bread. Einstein realized that just as there are different ways to cut a loaf of bread into individual slices, there are different ways to cut space-time into individual now slices. That is, because motion affects the passage of time, someone who's moving will have a different conception of what's happening right now. And so they'll cut the loaf into different now slices. Their slices will be at a different angle. That person who's moving will, will tilt the knife, will be carving out these slices at a different angle. They won't be parallel to my slices of time. To get a feel for the bizarre effect this can have, imagine an alien here in a galaxy 10 billion light years from Earth. And way over there on Earth, the guy at the gas station. Now, if the two are sitting still, not moving in relation to one another, their clocks tick off time at the same rate, and so they share the same now slices, which cut straight across the loaf. But watch what happens if the alien hops on his bike and rides directly away from Earth. Since motion slows the passage of time, their clocks will no longer tick off time at the same rate. And if their clocks no longer agree, their now slices will no longer agree either. The alien's now slice cuts through the loaf differently. It's angled toward the past. Since the alien is biking at a leisurely pace, his slice is angled to the past by only a minuscule amount. But across such a vast distance, that tiny angle results in a huge difference in time. So what the alien would find on his angled now slice, what he considers is happening right now on Earth, no longer includes our friend at the gas station or even 40 years earlier when our friend was a baby. Amazingly, the alien's now slice has swept back through 200 years of Earth history and now includes events that we consider part of the distant past, like Beethoven finishing the Fifth Symphony. Even at a relatively slow speed, we can have actually tremendous disagreements on our labeling of now, what happens at the same time, uh, if we're spread out far enough uh, in space. And if that's not strange enough, the direction you move makes a difference too. Watch what happens when the alien turns around and bikes toward Earth. The alien's new now slice is angled toward the future. And so it includes events that won't happen on Earth for 200 years. Perhaps our friend's great-great-great-granddaughter teleporting from Paris to New York. Once we know that your now can be what I consider the past, or your now can be what I consider the future, and your now is every bit as valid as my now, then we learn that the past must be real. The future must be real. They could be your now. That means past, present, future, all equally real. They all exist. If you believe the laws of physics, there's just as much reality to the future and the past as there is to the present moment. The past is not gone, and the future isn't non-existent. Past, the future, and the present are all existing in exactly the same way. Just as we think of all of space as being out there, we should think of all of time as being out there, too. Everything that has ever happened or will happen it all exists.